In November, 20-year-old Mike Tyson became the youngest heavyweight champion ever by knocking out Trevor Burbick. That was a right to the body and an uppercut to the head, and Burbick is down. It's over. That's all. And we have a new era in boxing. Then in December, in New York City, Bone Crusher Smith destroyed WBA champion Tim Witherspoon. Witherspoon's still in trouble. Down he goes again, and now it's over. So, finally, we come to Las Vegas, Nevada to unify the WBA and WBC heavyweight titles tonight on HBO. WBC heavyweight champion Mike Tyson meets WBA champion James Bone Crusher Smith. It's scheduled for 12 rounds. They've manufactured an outdoor stadium in the Hilton parking lot. Ticket prices start at $75, up to $750 for a seat at ringside. The last time there was an undisputed heavyweight champion, Muhammad Ali lost his title to Leon Spinks in one of the most shocking upsets in heavyweight history. That was way back in 1978. The site? indoors at this very hotel. Nine years later, Mike Tyson and Bone Crusher Smith will enter the ring with the WBA and WBC heavyweight titles on the line. Hello, everybody. I'm Barry Tompkins, along with Larry Merchant, Sugar Ray Leonard. Well, he's on special assignment. You know, it's a little bit like the Old West. There's a new fastest gun in town. There's a whole bunch of guys just outside the door of the saloon waiting to take a shot at him. Tonight, the man who challenges Mike Tyson, as the old saying goes, wears a big hat and does have some cattle. Larry Merchant, it seems we've been talking about the unification of the heavyweight title for months here on HBO. Now it's actually a fact. There is no IBF champion now. Michael Spinks has lost that title. Not in the ring, mind you. But this one, then, is for everything. There'll only be one heavyweight champion after tonight, and what we're looking for tonight is a sort of a showdown in the KO corral. And I think the excitement generally here is because for the first time in many, many years, going way back to George Foreman and Joe Frazier, there are two sluggers fighting for the heavyweight championship. Everybody expects them to go out and slug each other until one of them, or maybe even both of them, falls down. You said you but knew the... Not you said you knew the importance of the fight. Right. Do you think you're ready to fight Mike Tyson if he beats B uh, Bone Crusher in the next well, fight? Um, that's right. I was, I was waiting to the outcome of this fight, and uh, now, that I've, now that I've proven myself and won this fight, I, um, I should be the next person to fight Tyson, and uh, Tyson could come on and knock me out if he won, but I'm ready to fight him. Vanna White, never buy a vowel. Words to live by. I'm and here's Mike Tyson making his way toward the ring now. And that is a look, of course, that has struck fear in men's hearts. Six knockouts, two fights going. All in two years, Barry. His, his first professional fight a year from last night. This has been his longest layoff, 104 days. A totally insignificant number, I think. You know all the stories of no robe, no socks. Says it makes him feel like a gladiator. Sockless, but not punchless. That's five knockouts in the first 30 to 50 seconds. And, of course, as we said, a lot of people think this one is not going to go too far. You know, the, one the odds are 8 to 5, Barry, that this fight doesn't go past four rounds. You know, one popular school of thought, Larry, is that you can't stand in front of Mike Tyson. You have to go side to side if you're going to have any chance at all against him. And, of course, Bone Crusher Smith's history is to come straight ahead. 
I would think that there's also a theory that if you're going to fight Bone Crusher Smith, you shouldn't go straight ahead. <laughs> uh, his advantage, obviously, is in his fast hands. And then the pressure he puts on opponents. Right, there's been a lot of talk about pressure on a young man being a champion, being so prominent. But it's the pressure he puts on opponents that's crucial. Marvis Fraser, of course, one of three common opponents. Results similar amongst the bottom two that you see. But Marvis Fraser knocked out by Mike Tyson in one round. Smith lost the controversial decision in 10 rounds to Marvis Fraser. But when we talked to Bonecrusher Smith, he said that fight really turned his career around. It gave him a lot of confidence, and most important, it made him mad. Kevin Rooney, 30-year-old trainer. trainer. And here is Bone Crusher Smith now making his way toward the ring. Both popular fighters, incidentally. I don't think you'll hear a lot of boos here. In exchange for the right to come second into the ring, Bone Crusher Smith gave the right to the Tyson people to name the gloves they won. And interestingly enough, Tyson's gloves are Everlast gloves instead of Ray's gloves because they feel Ray's gloves are the knockout gloves. There you see James Bone Crusher Smith's weights over his recent fights. He weighs five pounds more than he did when he stopped Witherspoon in the first round. He weighed 240 when he stopped Mike Weaver, another ex-champion, in the first round. He says he's lifted some weights since the Witherspoon fight to add strength to his shoulders because he wants to control Tyson from outside, he says. And here comes Bone Crusher Smith now being led by Emil Griffith, his handler, trainer. Another point about those gloves, uh, Barry, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, the co-manager of Tyson, has been belittling the punching power of Smith all this time. But when uh, it came down to the crunch, he decided he didn't want Smith to have the puncher's gloves. So that tells us what they really think. And then what to keep in mind here is nobody wants to fight a big slugger, not even other sluggers. I think that's very true. As a matter of fact, he, he's a very intelligent guy, and he's very eloquent. But when we talked to him about what he's going to do in this fight, he was very succinct. He said, I'm going to put some leather on his ass. <laughs> Here's the tail of the tape at Smith, of course, 13 years the senior of Mike Tyson. Otherwise, really, not a lot to choose in these numbers, 14 pounds. The 11-inch reach is, uh, is much discussed, but Tyson says when you go to fight a kid in the street, you don't ask how long his reach is. <laughs> and here is punch stat again to give us a quantitative look at the number of punches Tyson and Smith throw in rounds. Roughly similar, but look how accurate Tyson is compared to Smith. Now here's a qualitative look at their punches. Tyson not only throws more hard punches, hooks and crosses, but lands significantly more of those punches. Again, attesting to his hand strength. Tonight, the dynamic duo, in association with the Las Vegas Hilton Hotel, presents the Super Fight, sponsored by Miller Lite. This bout is sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission Dwayne Ford, Chairman, Harold Buck, the Executive Director, the Commissioners at Ringside, Mr. Sammy Macias, Mr. Sig Rogic, and Mr. Herb Santos. The WBC representatives at Ringside, the President of that body, Jose Suleiman, and the Representative Ray Clark. The WBA representatives at Ringside, the President of that body, Gilberto Mendoza, and the Representative, the representative James Benz. The officials assigned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission for the main event of the evening. The judges are Lou Tabbitt, Dalby Shirley, and Jojo Guerra. The timekeeper is Mike Lachella. Counting at the knockdowns, Mike Morabito. The attending physicians at ringside, Drs. Donald Romeo, Flip Homansky, and Elias Ghanem. And your referee is Mills Lane. This is the main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the unification of the WBC and the WBA Heavyweight Championships. Introducing, in the red corner, fighting out of Magnolia, North Carolina, weighing in at 233 pounds, with a professional record of 19 wins, five defeats, with 14 KOs. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the WBA Heavyweight Champion of the World, James. Bone Crusher Smith.
and in the blue corner, from Catskill, New York, weighing 219 pounds. He is undefeated in his professional career with 28 wins, no defeats, 26 KOs. He is the WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. You never know what's going to happen when a man gets hit harder than he's ever been hit before, and it's possible for both fighters here. This fight has already gone longer than some people expected. Harold, how do you see it so far? <laughs> First round. Tyson right on Smith's chest. First right hand by Smith. Nowhere near its mark. It's also a straight right hand, and Smith will often come from right to left. Like that. Left to right. Step back to me. Step back. Don't push. Come on. Tyson unloading on Smith. Punching right hand. If you notice a tactic Smith is using, that he, he raises his arms and is uh, trying to make Tyson punch around his arms. which is a long way to go for a much shorter man. So look for Tyson to try to come straight up the middle with, a, with an uppercut. Three punch combination, two of them landed heavily. Although he's very aggressive, Tyson prides himself on also being a good defensive fighter. He hasn't been hit solidly very often. does have to lunge up at him a little right. bit. This hasn't turned into the train wreck everybody was looking for yet. Now Smith is being very patient, actually. seen anything quite like that in the ring before. Punch. Good man. You did job first, Cross. You hear me? Step, step with it. 
So take a look at what happened. The round is over a good five seconds. They've exchanged some words, and Tyson lost his cool. That's the first time I've ever seen him lose his cool before, during, or after a fight. Very true. You know, another thing, too, in Smith's corner, you heard Smith say, let me have the towel down on my shoulders. And I don't know if you feel it, Larry, but there's all of a sudden a cool breeze coming through here. And a cut over the right eye of Bone Crusher Smith. We'll try to tell you where it's coming from. That's the same eye that Larry Holmes opened up. But I can't see as yet where it is. I said the right eye, it's the left eye of Bone Crusher Smith. A lot of blood, but the blood right at the moment does not appear to be going into the eye, but rather alongside it, very similar to that of Tyrell Biggs. Tyson is unable to get off those Gatling gun combinations because Tyson, because Smith is just uh, thwarting him and staying away and playing on him, using his big long arms. And Mills Lane has deducted a point from Bone Crusher Smith for holding Mike Tyson. Smith got in a good right hand. Tyson walked right through it. And that's significant. The, the blood is leaking into the eye right now. Yeah, it is, and I was going to say one of the differences between this cut and the cut on Tyrell Biggs is that Tyrell Biggs was fighting David Bay. And not Mike Tyson. This is becoming a hitting and holding contest, not very appealing or dramatic. And you hear the crowd start to boo. It's the first time I've ever heard a crowd boo at a Mike Tyson fight. has got into Mike Tyson. Give me that. Give me that towel. You've got to move your hands. That's it, Jerry. Not bad. You've got to move your hands, Crusher. Oh, not bad. Crusher, got to move your hands. Throw the right hands, Crusher. You dropped it out. Holy shit. Uh, it's Put up, Let's see if we can catch the butt that apparently caused this punch. Right there, right there. There you see the blood starting to trickle already down the left eye. One, two, one, two, Crusher. One, two. One, two, Crusher. In the corner. Tyson has made Smith look very, very awkward. Just a big lunging fellow now against the speed of Tyson, who, who was a difficult target because of his size in any event. And that was indicated in the punch stat numbers that you saw a moment ago. Only 23% effectiveness for Bone Crusher Smith. Step back. Step back. Get back, 
It may be that Tyson is frustrated because he's been unable to land real combinations the way he does in the gyms and on most opponents. Smith is just fighting a, a, a fight to a defensive fight and Tyson can't do anything. There you saw him coming around the arm once again, unable to get any leverage into his punches. Tyson hit him a very good right hook a moment ago and that really opened the cut up a little bit more. And there's no question but that the cut is bothering Smith because the blood is getting in the eye. puts as much pressure on an opponent as Tyson does, his opponent often just becomes defensive. And Smith has done a lot of that. Smith got another straight right hand in, but it's only one punch and having no effect whatsoever on Tyson. Larry appears just to be trying to tee off and catch Tyson on the way in. That's his puncher's chance. Right now, it doesn't look like much of a chance. Tyson seems to be headhunting as well. He should be working on the body. He's having a hard time getting all the way up to his head. He has to bring down his guard. And he usually is a devastating body puncher. He seems to be fighting a more emotional fight than I've seen him fight. Good see Not bad. Okay. Tyson's corner telling him to fight more. Emil Griffith, you heard him say jab, then cross. Cut right at the moment has not opened up again. And it's actually not above, directly above the eye. It's more up on the forehead, but enough so that the blood does flow into the eye. blood now from the cut. And now, Bone Crusher Smith going backwards. We thought neither one of these fellows had a reverse gear, but Bone Crusher has just showed us his. Watch the head. Watch the head coming in. Come on, come on, come on. There was a big right hand by Tyson. Smith has reduced Tyson to having to hunt for him with one shot rather than combinations. Bone, bone Crusher may be trying to take a little bit of a blow here in this round. There's no way to train to fight a, a, for like Lance continues here. See if he can. You 
getting a good example right here of how Mike Tyson just does not allow Smith to get his punches off. And that Mike Tyson is very quick. He sees these punches coming. They're not quick punches. And he's able to, to duck them very easily. Smith saying to Tyson, come on, come on, come on. But that is merely words. Smith appears totally confused and frustrated. That walkabout and this one right here, I have no idea what it's supposed to do. Unless Smith figures out something fast, his heavyweight reign will last 85 days, and that will be it. And it doesn't appear really that Smith has a clue right at the moment how to solve this puzzle. There is another big right hand by Tyson. That's the first one that really backed Smith up. Not really what we expected, Larry. Smith right now is, is fighting basically a fight for survival, throwing a few hard punches in the hopes of connecting and making something happen. Double right hand that time by Tyson. And he appears to be getting tired as well. Black trunks is the reason for it. Every great fighter has had fights in which an awkward opponent has made them look something less than great. I'm not saying Mike Tyson is a great fighter yet, he's a great young fighter, but he's just against an opponent here who's in there to survive and hold as he is now. And I must say, Bone Crusher Smith is the one fighter I did not think would fight that way. <laughs> Pretty good exchange there. One punch on both parts, though. <laughs> Bone Crusher just kind of taunting Mike Tyson. I'm not sure why. Tyson doesn't want to get out on his chest and be held, so he's staying outside now, but with his short arms, he can't punch from outside. I don't know what interior, it might just be frustration on the part of Bone Crusher Smith. He hasn't been able to hit him the conventional way. Thank <laughs> you. 
me when you break us. There's a left hand. And now Tyson moves in. All right, we'll back, we we'll back, we we'll back, we we'll back, Joel. $750 ringside for this. Pretty hard to believe. Could have gone to see Wayne right, Newton. Get back. Get back. how other heavyweights didn't think as much of uh, Tyson with the apparent exception of Michael Spinks who's given up his title so he doesn't have to fight him. Right now he's making those heavyweights a little braver. A lopsided and basically uninteresting fight. The only interesting thing here is to watch Tyson and how he tries to deal with this. And I don't think he's dealing with it right. I mean, it's a frustrating fight. It's a hard fight. Smith just isn't there to be punched. But Tyson doesn't seem to be going about it professionally to try to break him down in some way. Punching to the body, perhaps. I don't know if you heard Tyson say when he went back to his corner after the last round, he said he doesn't want to fight. There was a body shot. That was not a punch. That was not a punch. Tyson got off the floor and looked at Smith with disdain as if to say, are you kidding me? You think that's a punch? Smith's eye springs open again. Smith landed two decent left hands. And he took one right there. Well, Smith instructed Smith to try to throw some uppercuts as Tyson comes in on him. It strikes me as just that Tyson is just there so quickly that you just can't get set to punch. I don't recall Tyson throwing any uppercuts in this fight. It appears to me that what Smith has been instructed to do is to hold his arms up once again so that Smith's roundhouse punches can't get to his head. And I think that he's got to go to the body and, and come up with some uppercuts in order to hurt Smith and land something solid. All right, come on, we'll step back. Step back, come on, Smith. Come on, Smith. Come on, Smith. Two hands are free. Come on. Come on. One step right, Tyson. 
I have a question, Barry. You think Tyson looks impressive enough to fight Tyrell Biggs in his <laughs> next fight? Second time. Bill Zane is trying to get them to fight. Get them to fight. That uppercut by Smith was just a little short. This is a sort of test of Tyson's concentration in a way. He's winning so easily that he doesn't want to make a very bad mistake and just get nailed. And I'm sure tucked somewhere in the back of Mike Tyson's head is the Smith Bruno fight when Bruno came out of nowhere after losing the fight very similarly to this one to knock out Frank Bruno. Admittedly, Bruno is not Mike Tyson. Tyson has been headhunting throughout this fight, and I don't recall him getting any instructions from his corner to stop it either. Now, in fact, the only instructions were jab, jab, jab. To that show. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and if we do, it would be. We wonder what they're going to take out of this for the highlights. All right, we step back. Quick punching, quick punching, Mike. Quick punching. Step back, Smitty. Step back. Don't Not Mike Tyson's fault. It takes two to fight. <laughs> Ty Smith is so frustrated by Tyson and was early on that he just kind of said to hell with him. He's been wearing a big cowboy hat around here all week and right now I'd have to say he's all hat and no cattle. Cut is opened up again over the eye of Bone Crusher Smith. I imagine Larry Holmes is sitting there in eastern Pennsylvania and thinking, well, if they come up with the money, I just might take a shot at this. Well, that's the thing, a fight like this brings them all out of the woodwork. George Foreman is starting his comeback on Monday. Get back, come on. Point of 
point out that Bone Crusher Smith has only been down once in his career, and that was in his first fight. In his defense, Bone Crusher is apparently trying his best. That just isn't good enough. This is your last round for Mike Tyson. But there are in fact two to go. Pressure Smith tomorrow morning is going to feel like his face was hit with a bag of rocks. Tyson is a, is a prideful athlete, and he really wants to look better. If he doesn't, it's just not there. Some days, an outstanding athlete or an outstanding team just doesn't have the opponent opposite that can, that can make him do his stuff. And that's certainly been the case tonight. I, I think the biggest thing is that we didn't expect it to be that way. Yep. Step back. Step back. shot by Mike Tyson, one of the few he's thrown. He should have had about 50 more by now. Come on, come on, come on, Mike. Come on, come on, Bowen. Oh, here we go. That's a big difference between Tyson and Joe Frazier. Tyson has been compared to Frazier for obvious reasons. Joe Fraser was a murderous body puncher. He didn't care who he was in there with. He killed the body first, and the head will go. It's dissatisfying because prize fighting is, uh, is drama and theater, and when you have a great athlete and you want to see him perform and tested, and, and he's not performing and he's not being tested. start reading about and hearing about Tyson now is come on fellas he's not as good as Ali he's not as good as Fraser and in truth he's not as good as they are he hasn't had the record to show it yet I think but, by it's, been said, but it's been said about every champion and it's uh, been said about Mike Tyson by Mike Tyson also he right. has said he's not great yet Joe Lewis wasn't as good as Dempsey and Ali wasn't as good as Lewis <laughs> speaking of theater well, we needed something. I didn't know that it would be comic relief coming from either either of these kind of serious fellows. Oh, 
Well, a minute and 15 to go in this one. Assuming we've kept you awake. Tyson is trying everything. Best punch of the fight. We thought we would see that in the first 10 seconds, not in the last 10 seconds. And it is over. It was, it was too late, it was too little for Bone Crusher Smith. Where was that an hour ago? <laughs> and I'm sure that's exactly what Bone Crusher Smith is going to be asking himself. Styles make fights, that has been said on so many occasions, and that was the case here tonight, only in this case, Styles did not make a fight. And it was a dance in large part for 12 rounds. Tyson trying to do everything he could. Let's take another look at that action right at the end, and I'm sure Mike Tyson, the next time we talk to him, is going to say that was one of the hardest shots he's taken. It definitely backed him up. Here's another look at it. Smith coming from down around the shoe tops. A wild swinging and holding. That was pretty much the story of the fight. Winging left hand as you look from our up top camera. And there's a look at a face that is going to smart come tomorrow. Take a look at the numbers from this fight. Tyson, of course, much more active and much more accurate. As Bone Crusher Smith with only a 23. Judge Lutevich scores 120, 106. Judge Lutevich scores 119, 107. Judge Lutevich scores 119, 107. For the new WBA WBC heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson. A popular verdict. At least the result was popular, not so much the way the result was attained. Iron Merchant trying to get his way over to the winner and still the champion Mike Tyson and he is with Mike Tyson right now so let's go up to the ring and Larry Merchant. Larry you got it. Hi Mike, you are the, now the WBA WBC champion, the only heavyweight champion now in the world. Do you feel satisfied after that fight? Well I feel good but I don't feel satisfied but as you know he was just trying to survive. I thought he was going to come out there and try to beat me up like he said. So he was going to try to win. Could, could you tell very early in the fight that he couldn't hit you with any punches. He was frustrated and he was just going to hold yeah. on. You know what else I noticed? When I threw my jab, I was hitting him with my jab and I was hurting him with my jab. But I feel like, you know, he didn't want to, he didn't want to fight. He didn't want to win. He didn't want to win at all. Was there anything you think you could have done to break him down? For example, you went to the body very, very rarely. I know. Um, it was one of those moves I saw. I had one of those guys that was just trying to throw one punch and catch me. And I knew guys like that would never hit me. And the last round, he hit me with a good shot. He was a hard puncher. I thought the punches in my arm and stuff, but like I said, I could take a good punch, and now I proved everybody. In the last round, he threw a good punch, and I felt it, but I came right back. In the, after the first round and the second round, you had words. After the first round, you threw a punch at him. It's all uncharacteristic. Were you frustrated that early? I wasn't frustrated, but inside, he kept trying to hold me, and he was trying to push his, his, his gloves in my face mm -hmm. and fight dirty. But you seem to lose your cool generally because of what seemed like frustration and not being able to do what Mike Tyson could do best. Well, you know, they're not always a good fight for me because most of these guys are going to fight me like this. You know, these are supposed to be the best heavyweights of my day. And, you know, they have no respect. They say, I'm a young boy. I haven't fought in anybody. Now, what can Bonecourt say? Is he, is he added to the list of the bums I fought? Then if, if, if I didn't knock him out, he fought like that, that makes him a bum too. Ask him if he a bum. He didn't want to fight. He didn't want to win. You want to win. You're a student of fight history. Have other heavyweight champions, can you recall, have had fights like this? Dempsey, most of Dempsey when he fought the guy in Montana. So he missed. No, it wasn't Miss. Gibbon. Gibbon. A boring fight. Everybody else saw the only last round when mm -hmm. Dempsey was looking great. It was a boring 15 round fight. Carpenter. Can, you, can you find solace in that? Can you go on to the next fight? 
Everybody's going to say, well, maybe Mike Tyson isn't all that good. Well, these things happen. But, you know, the thing that's more detrimental, when I go back in the gym and I go back home and leave the ring, I got to hear it from my trainer, and I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for it, and I know it's going to be murderous. <laughs> well, Mike, you feel awful bad for a guy who did awful good and pitched a shutout and is the only heavyweight champion in the world.